Justin, it's uh, great to meet you. Congratulations on the new role. Uh, you said, you know, Nokia is not in crisis. Actually, for me, it, it's the opposite. You are on the cusp as a company, the greatest opportunity in your history, which is to be a key player in the building of this new global digital economy. But you're tagging that to AI. Is it AI or is it bigger than that? Well, I think it's probably easy to tag it to AI, Steve, because that's the way that the super cycles happen, right? Where, where the internet drove a wave of investment in technology, mobile devices and uh, and new applications and SaaS and cloud. But it was the internet that, that spearheaded that. And I think AI is driving this next wave of investment. I think we, we sometimes forget how critical connectivity is. Yeah you know, to, to just the operation of the economy, to our national security, it's, it's a lifeblood. I mean, it's almost as critical as water and power these days. Some of the telecom industry has a sort of inferiority complex, particularly when compared to some of the AI companies at the moment. How do you change that within Nokia uh, to make sure that everybody realizes that they're capable of taking advantage of this huge opportunity at the moment? Nokia of today is a combination of companies. Yeah. It's not, you know, it, there's a lot of um, brand equity and value from the mobile phone days, but it's not the mobile phone company. It's about a team. We, there's many people doing many different things. You know, radio and mobile infrastructure here. We're doing optical manufacturing in, uh, in the U.S. on the back of the Infinera acquisition. Um, you know, fiber broadband. There's many folks doing many different things, cloud and software services. But it's about playing our positions and all aligning on the success. And to your point, these, these are growth markets. Mm. Today, uh, fixed networks, the network infrastructure business, is in a growth cycle because of the investments in AI. Mm. But I firmly believe that uh, the next story is going to be about mobile networks. Well, I agree with that. And I mean, I know that uh, AI data centers are a big focus for you, but they're sort of the factory. They're the means of production of AI. The product of AI is at the edge of the network, which is bang. That's where where Nokia is. And I come back to uh, the 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 division in our industry between hyperscalers and AI companies like Nvidia and telecom. Those guys need you in order to reach this part of the world and activate those businesses. Do you think they've recognised that? Do you think there's they're putting value in the partnerships now? Yeah, I, I do. I do think they are, and I think we're you know we're also doing a better job of, of recognizing where we can partner. And I think that's been part of, you know, part of the thing I've capitalized or maybe emphasized as I've come in is this understanding of us being in an ecosystem. Mm. You know, we're not just a supplier or vendor, but we need to co-innovate and collaborate. And in fact, if you, again, you know, looking back a little bit of, of history, but just seeing where technology is, that's the story of technology is, is best of breed coming together, co-innovating and delivering new sources of value. But there's another component to that, um, which is in the ecosystem, and that's the regulatory, the political component. And right now, it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen there. Is that making uh, your job harder? Well, I, I think the reality of where we are today is we are in a we're in a sense of geopolitical transition and instability. It probably feels like instability, but it's a it's a geo tra you know, geopolitical transition. If you think about you know again, if you think about what's the, the recent past looked like pre COVID, we had a completely stable electronics supply chain. Everybody built and bought in the same way. Mm -hmm. You know the the uh, investments in in R and D, uh, the investments in manufacturing were driven by cost as much as talent and innovation. And now we're in a, we're in a market where um, you have to consider the geopolitical dynamic. I, I think we'll, you know, we'll continue to invest in localized manufacturing. We'll continue to invest in the US in this area. We'll continue to align R&D resources where we see the biggest market opportunities. Uh, these, are, these are actually meaningful changes and you know, some, of, some of which the, company's, uh, the journey the company's been on already, but we need to, we need to be even more intentional uh, about that. And, and also think of the supply chain as, uh, you know, as a much more strategic asset than just a commodity supplier, but understanding the different strategic players in that. And also with our customers, understanding which ones are really pushing the innovation curve, which ones may, you know, may see themselves more as a, uh, as a utility provider. And, and not because we don't want to serve all of them, but because we need to lean on those customers that want to innovate and build these new sources of value so we can co-innovate and accelerate. Justin, I'm an Englishman in New York. You're an American in Finland. What's that like? Fantastic. Actually, uh, I've said to many people, it's, um, 
you know, probably the easiest place for an American to go is is the, is the UK. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I would say Finland's probably the second easiest. It's been wonderful for my family. Uh, for me, it's been uh, really easy to get settled. Um, uh, the you know the 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 Finns are are just been friendly and wonderful people, uh, and uh, and it's been uh, it's been great also getting settled in the professional culture. Uh, people have been really open and welcoming. So really nice to really nice to be here. Yeah. Well, congratulations again. You have a really big job. And, uh, you know, what an incredible opportunity as well. And it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. I look thank forward you. to talking to you again soon. Thank you.